Today, we are discussing about the food exhibition. It is important for diabetic food. As usual, before the examination, you have to introduce yourself and then ask the patient's permission, then privacy, then chaperone and exposure. So these are the first preliminary performance. First of all, we have to start the general examination. In general examination, you have to check in a glance for fever, any sepsis, any lymph adenitis, and any source of infection, you have to check. Before you check the local examination, you have to check the patient's shoes and slipper first. Because in shoe and slipper, you have to check what type, what is the nature of the shoes, what type of the shoes. Then is it fit or undersized? Is a proper is it a proper size? or is it an undersized? After that, you have to check the wear of the shoes. The wear of the shoes must be symmetrical. If the wear of the shoes is not symmetrical, it means there is some deformities in the affected leg. So, you have to check the shoes. And then, after that, you have to check the other, other things such as orthosis or is there any pori pori, whether it is present or not, you have to check. In local examination, you have to first describe about the lower limb, posture and attitude. Now the patient is lying comfortably on the couch and right leg is posted on the cast, hip and knee are in normal position, and ankle is in usual position. In some patients, the ankle is plantar flexed, so this is called equinus deformity. In some patients, here the ankle is in dorsiflexed, it is called the Calcania position. Okay, some people, this is the arch of the foot, longitudinal arch of the foot. Okay, some people, there is a high arch. It is called the best cabus. Some people, the arch, there is no arch. The foot is flat in lemon. It is called flat foot or best planus. Okay, sometimes, it is opposite, there is a concavity in lower side, it is a, it, like in the chocolate food, it is the recurvidum deformity. So, in this way, you have to check the foot deformity. Then you have to check the toes. In toes, first of, first of all, you have to count the number of the toes. Is it complete number of the toes or missing, you have to differentiate. Then after that, you have to check the deformities of the toes. There are two deformities, hammer toe and claw toe. Hammer toe, it is the flexion of the uh, distal interfalangeal joint. It is only one joint. Hammer toe involves only one joint. Claw toe, there are two joints, interfalangeal joint, proximal interfalangeal joint, and distal interfalangeal joints are involved. Claw toe is like this. Hammer toe is only one joint. So you have to differentiate between the claw toes and hammer toes. These are the two deformances. After that, in toes, you have to check the skin. Skin, dagger, color, dryness, and shining. You have to check. After that, 
you have to check the nails. You have to check the nails. So the nail may be brittle or maybe dystrophy or atrophy or hypertrophy. The nail will be deformed. You have to check the deformities of the nail. After that, you have to check the hairs, whether the hairs are sparse or not. You have to check with the other normal leg. So you have to check the hairs also. Okay, finally, you have to check the cleft between the toes. Sometimes there's a fungus infection in the cleft of the toes, interdigital fungus. So that's our examination of the toes. This of the foot and dorsal aspect. Here, skin. As I already prescribed, I already described the skin may be dry, shy. What about the tiger and what about the color? And then over the skin, what about the hairs? Hairs are sparse or not? You have to check in dorsum of the foot. You have to check the sole of the foot, whether there is a callosity and cons. Here you see the callosity. Here there is a broad and hard plate is here. Not painful. Is it painful? No, no not painful. This is the callosity. Cons is a localized bulging. So it is when it press, it is painful. It is cons. So this is a callosity. This is a, for example, a maybe the localized vision is the corn. So corn is painful, callosity is not painful. And then what about the skin fissure? Skin dryness and fissure are found in the sole of the foot. If there is an asa, you have to describe the asa. Asa may be dorsum, asa may be sole, asa may be tip of the toes. So you have to describe the same. As you already know, asa, side, size, shape, then margin. Then after that, what, what about the floor? Floor is what tissues in the floor? What about the margin? It's punched out or inverted or something. After that, whether the wound has past discharge, any discharge, bleeding, pass, any serious discharge, you have to describe. So in this way, you finish the inspection of the foot. In film, you have to start with the temperature. You have to compare both sides, dorsum of the foot, sole of the foot. Then, tenderness. Tenderness means you must know the body tenderness. So in body tenderness, whether there is an interphalangeal joint in the toes, then metatarsal phalangeal joint, then after that metatarsal bowl, then tarsal bowl, then telas, then cacanium. After that, there is a malleoli, lower end of the tibia, and ankle joint. Where is the tenderness? You must elicit. If there is an ulcer, you must test the Pain in the asa, you probe with a needle. Is there any pain? You have to test. Pain is present, it is the different. Pain is present, it is the painful. Pain is absent, it is loss of sensation. In this way, you can differentiate. Okay? Except apart from the pain. In diabetic food, proprioception, joint position set is very, very important. Here you see, here you want to test the joint position set, you control the proximal phalanx. You control the proximal phalanx and then ask the patient. So here you see, patient, here, please check here. Are they, you see, this is extension. 
This is is this in? This is this is an uh, utter. This is power. Utter power. Please, Toto Matan. Then, what is it? Utter. It is what is it? Power. So in this way, you have to check the proprioception joint position. Set. Diabetic two. It is the very sensitive method to assess the joint to assess the sensory. So sensory impairment includes the joint position set also. After that, you have to check the vascularity. So dorsal speed is you have to check and you have to compare both sides. Dorsal speed is then you have to check the posterior tibial artery both sides. In this way, you have to check the vascularity. Neurological deficit. Neural deficit. For neural deficit, there is a pain and proprioception. Pain sensation with a needle. You probe all the uh, dorsum of the foot and sole of the foot. The best, the standard is the you have to use the 5507 monofilament. 5507 monofilament. How? You press, probe, and press till the filament is bent. It is the normal pressure for testing the sensation because. Sometimes you may probe lightly, sometimes you may probe deeply. So there is no standardized. So now standardization with a monofilament test. 5507 monofilament test. So you probe and then press till the monofilament bent. So it is the normal pressure to test it. It is the standard pressure to test the pain. Now the monofilament is bent, but he said there is no sensation. Yes, now you can determine sensory is lost. In this way, you can detect the dorsum of the foot as well as sole of the foot. Okay, then another sensory test is, as I told you, proprioception. Firstly, you have to teach the patient. Okay. This is up, this is down. Okay, close your eye. Then, what is it? Up. Up. What is it? Up. Now, during that time, you have to make trick on the patient. Now, twist, 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 and then suddenly, what is it? Up. Up. In this way, you have to assess the patient's sensation. Next is the for neurological assessment for movement. So, you can test the angle, dorsiflexion, okay, actively plantar flexion of the angle. Dorsiflexion of the angle, plantar flexion of the angle, you have to test. Then, extension of the toes and flexion of the toes, you have to assess. And these are the active, active, active movements. So you have to test. So active ankle dorsiflexion, active plantar flexion of the ankle. So active extension of the toes, active flexion of the toes, you have to test. These are the active motor test. Next, you have to do the passive movement. It is most important in diabetic foot examination. In how to do the passive, the query, the code is the patient is in sitting position. Then here there is a you have to check three joints. One is the ankle, another is a subtalar, third is the tarso metatarso, tarso metatarso joint. So ankle joint action is dorsiflexion and plantar flexion. 
Subtila joint action is the inversion eversion. Subtila joint action inversion eversion. Then tarsal metatarsal joint action supination pronation. These are the normal movement. Now we are. I am testing now. So in passive. Now I want to test the ankle. So I want to test the ankle. So I hold the subtila joint here. I want to test the ankle joint. Now I hold the. I stabilize the subtila joint here. Then the patient foot is on my forearm. Then I grip the subtila joint. Then I control the tarsal metatarsal joint. Now I move the ankle joint back, forward, backward, forward. This movement is the ankle joint. It is important in charcoal foot. Okay, this is for the ankle joint. Then subtila joint. So now you hold the calcanea with one hand. You hold the talus with one hand. Talus is here below the malleolus. You hold the calcanea. You hold the subtila joint. Then inversion, 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 inversion. The whole foot is on my forearm by controlling the. In this way, you control the uh, tarsal metatarsal joint. So here, you hold the calcaneum, you hold the talus. Then inversion, 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 inversion. Okay. Then after that, you will do the. Tarsal metatarsal joint movement. It is a pronation and supination. Now you control the subtila joint and ankle joint, both joint. Subtila and ankle joint are controlled. Then you hold the full foot. Then this is the pronation. So this is the supination, pronation, prona supination, pronation, supination, pronation. So this is the movement of the. Tarsal metatarsal joint. In this way, you have to test the passive movement of the ankle, subtila, and metatarsal phalangeal joint. All are important in the Charcot examination. So, in hospital, the patient is lying in bed. You may not have chance of the patient's sitting position. You have to test in lying position. So the same. The patient foot placed on my forearm. Then after that, at the same time, I control the subtila joint. Then after that, with other hand, I control the tarsal metatarsal joint. Now you already control the subtila joint and tarsal metatarsal joint. You free only the ankle joint. Now, here the movement this is an ankle dorsiflexion and plantar flexion. The only dorsiflexion and plantar flexion of the ankle. After that, you want to test the subtila joint. So here the same. The the foot is still on my. Forearm, I hold the calcaneum. Then here with this finger, the other hand with the other hand, I hold the tila joint, tila, tila, tila. Then I do the inversion, 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 inversion. This is the subtila joint movement. Okay, after that. I control the ankle joint as well as the subtila joint. With the other hand, I hold the forefoot. Then, here, this is the supination, 
This is the pronation. Supination, pronation. Supination, pronation. In this way, we can check ankle drag, subtila drag, and tassel, metatassel drag, movement. They all are important in the charcoal drag classification. Finally, I would like to warn you, if there is an ASA, you must differentiate between the neuropathic ASA, ischemic ASA, and neuroischemic ASA. There are three categories. So, neuropathic ASA, you are usually in the pressure point. Ischemic ASA, usually at the tips of the foot, tips of the toes. And neuropathic ASA, no pain. Ischemic ASA is painful. And neuropathic ASA, there is a associated with the loss of sensation. And ischemic ASA, there is no pulse. So, in this way, you have to differentiate between the neuropathic and ischemic ulcers. It is important for the treatment.